Hey, this is Matt once again. We're about to another video. And this is actually a request from Jack Thompson. Thank you so much for that. People want to request pretty much any type of video, review, re-review. Doesn't just have to be a movie. It could be a topic, a reaction, whatever. You just send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. And yeah, I know I spilled on my shirt. Fuck it. Give a fuck. But the topic at hand is he compiled a list on IMDb. He says movies produced by New Image. Now I'm taking his word for it because he made the list. Jack Thompson right here. He says here's the listing order of the movies which have been produced by New Image. Which created many action films from the 90s and onwards as they have started from the direct video market to big budget theatrical movies. I mean, this is what he says right here. Now, if none of these are actual new image, don't blame me, it's not my fault. But I mean, hey, it is what it is. Uh, take his word for it. I think mainly films that had a hand in or produced by Avi Lerner. But you know what? It's a list. He wants my reaction on the list and that's perfectly fine. Thank you so much, Chad Thompson. And it helps because the first couple, you know, I've actually seen, so I can actually give some thoughts to it. For example, Alan Quartermain and the Lost City of Gold. See, that's how you spell Quartermain. Unlike the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, which they spell Q-U-A-R-T. But this is how you actually spell Quartermain. Although I will say the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, I would probably put above this film. But I still think the best quarter main film to this day is King Solomon's Minds with Richard Chamberlain. I've got it. The funny thing is, back in the day, this is the one I saw first. And I did not even know it was a sequel when I was a kid. I just thought, okay, they made this film called Alan Quarterman Lost City of Gold. Again, it was some time later where I found out that this was a sequel. And then there's the first one. And then I think I first saw the when I first saw it, I went, oh, I like the sequel more. But nowadays, I like the first film much more than this. But this one, and I think with IMDb list, you can put a little bit of, quote, your own words. So he says, it's fun. I agree. It's a fun movie. It's not a great movie. But I don't think it's as horrible as the canon films documentary made it out to be. Yeah, I think King Solomon's Minds is a better film. But this one, it's hampered by its low budget. I think it's one of those movies where the first half of the film is fairly fun. When they get to the City of Gold, the film kind of stutters and stops. And it's like, okay, we're here. What else do we do? But, the, you know, the finale has some entertainment value. You got Henry Silva, the bad guy from Above the Law and Code of Silence. He's the bad guy here. The other funny thing about this is if you watch the trailer, there's stuff in the trailer that's not in the movie. For example, if you watch the trailer, there's Richard Chamberlain with a whip. I have a feeling that got cut out because they don't want to get sued by Indiana Jones. Like, wait a minute. This is already a rip off Indiana Jones. But now you're using a whip. So, but yeah. It needed a bigger budget. Sharon Stone is not the best choice for this kind of role. But, uh, again. It's a watchable movie. Ah, American Ninja 2 Confrontation. I believe I reviewed the American Ninja films a long time ago. They should still be up on the channel. Jack Thompson says, personal favorite of the franchise. I agree. I love American Ninja 2. Uh, it's my favorite of the franchise as well. I think Michael Dukoff once again does a good job. Capable of direction once again by Sam Furstenberg. Steve James is a badass. Has a, a kick-ass score. I think the best score of all the American Ninja films. Especially the, the main theme. I can't even do it justice, so I'm not even going to try. I think George Clinton did the music. Could be wrong. But I thought you, you had some nice banter between Dudikoff and Steve James. Steve James, it felt like he had more to do in this. Maybe it's, not this, maybe it's the same running time, but it just felt like Steve James was more 
prominent in this compared to the first one. And I do like the first one, but this one, I like the Caribbean setting. Yeah, the, the plot is silly. Super criminals, one called the Lion, super ninjas. <laughs> Fuck it. It's, still, it's fun. It's entertaining. Does not deserve a 4.9. That's horseshit. It should be a lot higher. American Ninja 2, 4.9 my ass. That's just why IMDb, when I did my IMDb files, which are still up, that's why I call IMDb in my damn butt cheeks, because smells just as right as this horse shit. So 4.9 my ass. I bet if I ask a shitload of people on my channel, they'll say American Ninja 2 is pretty fucking good. Now, I can't go in depth on every movie because there's 145 films. If Even if I took one minute, that'd be 145 minutes. That's two and a half hours. <clears throat> but at least for a little bit, it's the least I could do for Jack Thompson. Shit. Well, don't skip all those. Go back. <clears throat> Ailer from L.A., oh my God. Abapune. Two best films the guy did was Cyborg and Dollman. And Nemesis, three films. <clears throat> but he made some terrible ones. This is one of them. Kathy Ireland is not a lead. She was not good in the film. She was a bad actress. She had no charisma. She's good looking, but that's pretty much it. That cover is more expensive than the movie itself. And that's the thing with covers back to the day. You think that cover it justifies the movie? That's not even the right way to use that word. That cover does not at all represent. That's the word I'm looking for. Does not at all represent the movie. Teenage girl looking for an archaeologist's father. Yeah, because you buy Kathy Ireland as a nerdy teenage girl. Sure you do. That's like... Uh, what the hell, Denise Richards in the James Bond film, or that one girl, Alone in the Dark, Uwe Bowles film, whatever the hell her name was. I just, I just remember this movie sucking ass. Platoon Leader, decent film. Pretty good war film with Michael Dukoff. Um, it's weird, he's third build here, but he is the star of the film. And... With my Michael Dukov films, don't really talk about Platoon Leader, but it's a fairly, fairly acceptable film. I'm just not. I haven't seen the film in a long time, so it's hard to come up with details about the film. I do remember liking it though. Which I'm kind of confused with the new image. Maybe Jack Tops can explain. I thought some of these were uh, canon films. Like Adam Quartermain, Lost City of Gold, American Ninja 2. I thought they were canon films. Are they canon films or New Image or is it both? Or uh, maybe Jack Thompson can uh, explain that to me. See, it's not, it's not uh, wrong to ask people questions if you don't know. That's how you learn. See, I'm not going to be one, oh, I know everything. No, I don't. I'm sincerely ask a question. I will. Hopefully get an answer. And then that's how you know. See, this is people on YouTube, they act as if they're a fucking expert. No, you read a fucking article on Wikipedia. That doesn't mean you're a fucking expert. I'm just talking about like some high profile 2 million subscriber YouTubers. Or 20 million. I know everything about this movie. Um, Yeah, you read it on Wikipedia. I can do that too. I right, getting back to this. Now I know why I was going on tangents, because Howling five, 4 is next. 5 is better than 4. I'm, I should be Howling 5, but Howling 4, one of the worst Howling films. People are like, oh, that's not right. In my opinion, it is. That that effect looks cool on the cover. Um, the f 5 minutes, that's even saying too much. The small part that's on screen, this is like a lame remake of the first movie, where nothing, nothing, nothing happens. A little bit happens at the end. It wasn't worth it. So it wasn't worth the wait. I believe I reviewed all the Howling films. 
Uh, the worst one, it, that's not the worst ones. New Moon Rising Howling 7 is the worst. But that one is better than 7, but still don't care for it. American Ninja 3, the last American Ninja film I could deal with. Sad that Michael Dukov did not star in it. Instead, it's David Bradley. David Bradley is okay, but I just, just never found him as that presence compared to Michael Dukov. But he was acceptable. Steve James is the main star of that film to me, and that's why I can watch that film, is for Steve James. Steve James kicking ass, Steve James and his sense of humor. Um, Steve James did get to star in a handful of movies, but it seemed like when he did, he was not this type of character, and I think that was a mistake. Uh, there was the... I reviewed the one he did with Red Brown. He was much more, which was all right for what it was. But he was much, a little bit more of a serious character compared to this. And I think if you took this character, like this character should have spawned a movie of its own. You know, Jackson. Hell, if Carl Weathers had not done Action Jackson, that could have been Action Jackson starring Steve James. His name is Jackson, so... And once again, if you look into the plot, the plot is silly, but again, it's a time waster. I've seen so much worse action films. I could watch this. Some decent martial arts. I don't even mind the musical score in the film. You know, but yeah, Steve James is the, the best part of the movie. Red to Ninja 4, The Annihilation. Might as well anni annihilate your ass on the toilet. Because that's where it belongs. I'm sorry, this is not part three, in my opinion. I think I have these because uh, I did an IMDb list back in the day of where you do these check marks. I think because I was trying to do a list like my favorite and worst movies, I was going to try to make a list of that, but it was too fucking long because there's thousands of movies to go through. I know I was going to put this like on the worst list because this to me is one of the worst sequels. You have these two guys. I remember as a kid being excited because I grew up with the American Ninja films. I'm like, wow, both of them are in it? This is like a big event. Well, they're barely on screen together. Either they didn't like each other or it was a shitty script writing point or whatever the hell reason. I don't know because... You don't have many people asking and talked about American Ninja 4. I know there's a Blu-ray and there was a feature on it. And I don't even remember what the hell was on the featurette of the American Ninja 4 Blu-ray. I don't even remember. If someone does, feel free to comment. As he's, you know, Jack Thompson, such a disappointment. Michael Dukov's last, last American Ninja. Yeah, it's, you don't have Steve, ja Steve James coming back. He was still with us in 1990. I guess they said... They either chose not to or Steve James chose not to. I don't know. Maybe he was doing other movies instead. So not having Steve James was a mistake. These two, they're like in their separate films. And they come together like one scene. The villain... Lick my boot, more like lick my ass, motherfucker. Like it's this lame ass villain. American Ninja Four, whatever. Terminator Woman, never saw it. It says Terminator Woman, but apparently it's not sci-fi, so I guess there's no Terminators in it. Two martial art cops trapped out a drug lord. Oh, Michelle Queasy, who's the villain in uh, Tip Boxer. So why is it called Terminator Woman? There's no... Cyborg Cop, I, you know, I almost forgot I reviewed that film, but I did review it. It was, eh, I was really big on the film. Just couldn't get into it. If you want to know why, feel free to watch my review. FTW, I guess it's known as The Last Ride, Mickey Ward, never even heard of this film. Peter Berg is in it. Mickey Ward's character has been released from prison. He's a rodeo rider. Crime drama romance. We have never heard of this film. 
Cyborg Cop 2. Cyborg Cop 3. I didn't see these movies, so I can't say anything about them. You know what's bad when even David Bradley won't come back for a sequel. Ah, uh, yes. Deadly Outbreak. 4.8 my ass. As Jack Thompson says, favorite Speedman movie, still can't believe it doesn't have an official DVD release. I agree. I love Deadly Outbreak. You know, as years have gone on, I probably would say that that is my favorite Jeff Speedman film. I go in between The Perfect Weapon and Deadly Outbreak because The Perfect Weapon has a bit more of that sleekness because it was a movie made for theaters. But Deadly Outbreak just has it all for the action. You got the tempo martial arts, you got tons of shootouts and explosions and you put a they put a lot of bang for their buck in the on the screen. I thought that was rather cool. Still pissed, still mad that Scott Atkins did not ask him Jeff Speakman about this film. Would love to have heard about this film. Deserves a fucking DVD or Blu-ray. I know it's also known as Deadly Takeover. So if you want to watch the film, if you can't find it under Deadly Outbreak, it might be under Deadly Takeover. If you like martial art movies where it's a diehard type of film, tons of action, practical. F that is one of my favorite lines. He shoots a guy in the balls and goes, guess you forgot your bulletproof cup. I love Deadly Outbreak. Live Wire 2. Never knew there was a fucking Live Wire 2. I guess it's also known as just the human time bomb. I like the first Live Wire that has. That has a. Uh, Pierce Brosnan, Ron Silver. I, that's a rather good film. I reviewed that on the channel. That's an underrated movie where people will drink this liquid and it turns them into actual fucking bombs. And like their skin start bleeding out and breaking apart and they become like walking fucking nitroglycerin. I, I just rather violent at times. In the third app, Pierce Brosnan makes little traps, like nail traps. And yeah, live wire things underrated. This one, I don't know what fucking thing about. Brian Genesee, I think he was in a film I reviewed called Cold Harvest. And then Joe Lara, that's the guy who starred in American Warrior. Uh, no, American Cyborg, Steel Warrior. Yeah, never even. Sounds like it has nothing to do with the first movie. So, I'm sure that title was just put in there afterwards. Wild Side, Christopher Walken, Joan Chen, Stephen Bauer, and Haish. International Money Mover and Influence Peddler. What the hell does that mean, Influence Peddler? Such appetite requires services of banker and part-time hooker Alex. Action Thrill, never even heard of this. Hard Justice, David Bradley's best film. I really enjoyed this one. Pretty much David Bradley, well it says it goes undercover in a prison. Charles Napier, Murdoch from Rambo First Blood Part 2. He's one of your villains. Really what this film is, this director watched a lot of John Woo films and with a low direct video budget, he wanted to make a John Woo movie. And I thought it was very entertaining. It has a ton of action, well done, well staged action sequences, bullets flying off the walls. I mean... I do, what do you go in for a directed video action film? If you want a shitload of action and violence and a hero kicking ass and some pretty stellar stunt work and explosions for a budget, Hard Justice is worth a look. The last word. He says, very interesting film with a twist. I've never even heard of this. Journalist falls for a stripper with a dark past. Timothy Hutton, Joel Pantoliano, Tony Goldwyn, Chaz Pelmentary. 
They never even heard of it. The Immortals. I haven't seen this. I remember the trailer to this because I'm watching the trailer and it says, okay, Eric Roberts, Joe Pantoliano, Tia Carrera. Okay, cool. Tony Curtis. Chris Rock. I'm like, wait, Chris Rock is in this? Like, this is 1995. Chris Rock? And it's still crazy that Chris Rock, nowhere on the poster here. Nowhere on the poster. That's Clarence Williams the third, Tia Carrera, Eric Roberts, Joe Pettiano, Predrick Cast. But Chris Rock. Chris Rock is probably the biggest name. Not even probably. He's the biggest name of all these actors. Not on the cover. Go fucking figure. Obviously, they didn't see much of anything. I just always found that in, crazy. Well, this is a film with Chris Rod no one's ever talked about. I haven't even seen it. Warhead. I'm sure, it's probably a cheap movie. Frank Zadarino, Joe Laura. Threatened to launch missiles at Washington unless the president resigns immediately. $1 billion places Swiss account. Sounds like a lame takeoff of The Rock. Danger Zone. I actually reviewed this film a month or two ago. Let's go back. Uh, yeah, I reviewed it. Mining engineer is involved in the Civil War, international conspiracy. Yeah, this was a film I didn't mind. Uh, Billy Zane was okay. Robert Downey Jr., he has this weird accent. He's in like three scenes. About two or three scenes. Low budgets hamper, hampers the movie. It's... <laughs> Can't believe Robert Downey Jr. was in this. Well, I think he admitted somewhere that he did it strictly for the money. Because this is when his drug stage. So, yeah, I can believe it. Uh, hello, she lied. What the hell is that? With that said, I'll be right back. If I can remember, I'll edit this out, but we'll see. Okay. Hopefully that's edited. If not, then I fucked up. But uh, I think the last I was at was Hello, She Lied. I don't even fuck if she lied or not. As long as she doesn't owe me money. Oh, Kathy Island. Next. Past Perfect. I've heard of this film. I haven't seen it. Eric, Eric Roberts stars in it. Action, drama, sci-fi. Did Mantuzo from Rapid Fire is in it? Laurie Holden, who is in Dumb and Dumber. Interesting. Had never seen the film. Last Days of Frankie the Fly. Dennis Hopper, Tiva Sutherland. Daryl Hannah and Michael Madsen. Again, interesting. Never seen the film. Pretty good cast. Forest Warrior. Oh my god, Forest Warrior. I'm sorry, it's easily one of Chuck Norris's worst films, and I like Chuck Norris. He turns to fucking animals, man. It's just a lame kids film. You also have Bernie. You know, Terry Kaiser from Weekend of Bernie's. Forest Warriors a fucking piece of shit. Orion's T. Never seen it, but I. Yeah, never seen it. Judge and Jury. I remember this cover, but I never saw the film. Let Two Killer Returns from the Dead to Take Revenge on the Authorities Who Caught Him. That sounds like Shocker. <laughs> or. The Horror Show, or a bunch of others. David Keith, Martin Cove, Thomas Ian Nicholas. All, none of them that are on the cover. Unless they're one of, unless one of them is this guy. I mean, I know that's not Martin Cove. I don't think that's Thomas Ian Nicholas. Don't think that's David Keith. Could be wrong, maybe it is. Operation Delta Force. I think I did see this film. Might have even reviewed it. Ernie Hudson, Jeff Fahey, Sam Furstenberg, who did American Ninja 1 and 2, did it. I think I remember being meh about it. But uh, I don't remember much. Maybe that says a lot. Merchant of Death, Michael Paré. 
I wonder if it's this or another one where one of them had like a lot of stock footage in it. Uh, Michael Prey films. I'm, I, yeah, I'm not sure if it was this or another one. The Peacekeeper. I reviewed that when I did my Dolph Lundgren marathon. Yeah, as Jack Thompson says, awesome car chase. I agree. Uh, the Peacekeeper, again, it's another diehard type of movie. Bad guys, terrorists take over this missile silo. They want to launch, create a holocaust. Or they want Roy Scheider, who's the president, to kill himself on TV. Dolph Lundgren joins up with Montel Williams. Yes, that Montel Williams, the talk show host. And when he talked about the car chase, there's a pretty cool chase near the beginning of the film where Dolph and the bad guys are chasing each other in cars over fucking rooftops. The fact they were able to accomplish that on the low budget, pretty damn decent. Granted, some of the other action scenes don't rise to the level as that car chase, but this still a fun... Again, if you want to know more, my review's up on the channel. Not that bad of a movie. If you go into it knowing it's a directed video film, a lot of these directed video films, yeah, they could use a bigger budget, but for the budget they had, I, I saw some effort put into it. Plus, I'm a fan of Dolph. This is another one I know I reviewed, Top of the World. Uh, again, not a bad movie. Great action film in Vegas and Sadol stole footage from it. Yeah, there's a scene where Peter Weller is on top of a vehicle. I forget if it was a, not a fire truck, ambulance. I forget what the, the vehicle was. But it's going through Vegas and you see some pretty damn good stunt sequences. And you know, they're doing it with real vehicles on the streets of Vegas. Like somehow they got away with this. And that footage was stolen and put into, I want to say it's Today You Die with Steven Seagal. They totally just ripped the footage and put in there. And then they just put Seagal's fat ass in place of Peter Weller or whatever the fuck you were. So we, oh God. But this one, it's worth the watch just for the cast. I mean, yeah, Peter Weller, Dennis Hopper, Tia Carrera, David Allen Greer, uh, Martin Cove, Kerry Aoyuki Tagawa. Joel Pentiliano, I think, sent it. Pretty damn good cast. Operation Delta Force 2, didn't see. I guess they don't have any of the cast members coming back. Star City. A young cop gets thrown in with a special police squad who are acting as assassins against hoods and who don't care who gets in the way. Interesting idea. Stephen Baldwin, Tia Carrera, Chaz Palminteri. Police squad who are vigilantes. It's that an original idea, but I don't mind that. Hmm. He who controls the cops controls the city. Well, is a scarred city or star city? Like which is it? The scarred city or star city? So what's the fucking title of the movie? They did a nut. How many Operation Delta Force movies are there? Fuck. Guess they made some chunk of money that made three of them. Bright Up, Kiefer Sutherland, Bridget Fonda. Yeah, I don't really know much about this. Can't say anything if I don't know much about it. On the Border, Casper Van Dien, Brian Brown from the movie FX and FX2, TV movie, yeah, don't know much about it. No Code of Conduct, I think I did review this film, it might not be up anymore though. Yeah, it's just Charlie Sheen working with his dad, Martin Sheen, Martha Costros plays Charlie Sheen's partner. The three of them uncover a plot by city elders to smuggle drugs from Mexico into Phoenix, Arizona. Yeah, I don't remember much of shit about this movie. Sweepers. First off, this cover does not represent the movie that well. 
I think the movie's a lot better. Well, he, very underrated as the explosions are great. Yeah, I agree. Jack Thompson, I agree. Dolph Lundgren plays a guy who was a minesweeper. And in the beginning of the film, this big action scene happens. His son dies. He... In a way, this is... Aside from the mine... Like the sweeping from mines... I was going to say, in a way, this is a better version of Danger Zone with Billy Zane. Both the movies even end on a train, funny enough. But this one, I just thought, it seemed like it went at a better pace. It seemed like it had a bit more action compared to Danger Zone. But I didn't mind Sweepers, but if you want to know more about that, feel free to watch my review. When I did my Dolph Lundgren marathon. The Big Brass Ring. Don't know about Shark Attack. Don't know about Cold Harvest. Funny enough, I just did a review of that recently. I enjoyed Cold Harvest. Fun Gary Daniels movie. Some nice direction by Isaac Florentine. Who would direct films of... Uh, with Scott Atkins. Bridge of Dragons, I reviewed that when I did my Dolph Lundgren Marathon. Once again, Isaac Florentine, pretty decent film. Pretty decent flick. I didn't need to tell Isaac Florentine was definitely influenced by the Kung Fu, like Jackie Chan's team of, you know, that kind of stuff, man. When people got hit, you see like powder fly off. Like he was that was definitely an influence for the director. Oh my, how many of these fucking movies are there? There's a four, there's a five. Is this like witchcraft? There's like 18 fucking Operation Delta Forces. U.S. Seals. Then C. Take Down. Based on the story of Computer Hacker, Computer Hacker Kevin Mitnick. Oh, Joe Chappelle. Is that the guy who did Halloween 6 and Phantoms? Or is that another Chappelle? Steed Ulrich. Oh, Tom Barringer's in it as well. Never even heard of this film, so I don't know anything about it. This is 6.3. Go figure. Huh. The alternate... Damn, I wonder what's so bad about this movie. It has a 2.8. Eric Roberts, Ice-T, Michael Madsen, Brian Genesee. Yeah, I wonder like, what, what is so bad about this film. A stage kidnapping of the President of the U.S. because very real, forcing a lone hero to save the day. Well, I have a feeling this is one of those movies that has a shitload of stock footage from other movies. Just a feeling I have. City of Fear, another Gary Daniels film. Gary Daniels film I've not seen. Spiders. Hmm. I have a feeling I've seen that, but I don't remember anything about it. Hmm. Uh, I don't mind the cover. Crocodile. I did review this because I did a little Toby Hooper marathon, and this was one of them. And this was kind of a. I thought it'd be low average movie of its ilk. Especially that Toby Hooper directed it. I mean, just go watch Crawl that came out a few years ago. Go watch Alligator. But this is Crocodile. I know, but I'm just saying the similar. Go watch Alligator. Go watch. Uh, what was that Australian one? Rogue. Go watch Road. Go watch, uh, well, there was another one I reviewed, Black. I swear that was also in Australia as well. I forgot what the hell it was. There's a lot better movies than Crocodile. Again, the fact that Toby Hooper directed it, that was fairly disappointing. Forever Lulu. This is a Patrick Swayze film. I did a little Patrick Swayze marathon. I didn't go into all of his movies. This, this is one I didn't realize he made. 
schizophrenic romantic tracks down her college sweetheart to help her find their son she gave she gave up for adoption 16 years ago to the dismay of his new wife Melanie Griffith, Patrick Swayze, Penelope Ann Miller, and Joseph Gordon Levitt. Okay, it's more of a drama. So, New Image produced all these, even these dramas? Huh. Octopus. I might have seen it, but I don't remember anything about it. Shocker Tattoo. Didn't see it. Replicant. That's a shitty cover. I reviewed Replicant when I did my Van Damme Marathon. Love Replicant's a really good movie. Randall Lamb, may he rest in peace. Solid director. Nice direction of action sequences. For example, Michael Rooker who plays a cop looking for a killer played by Van Damme. Michael Rooker finds out there's a program of cloning where these people have cloned the killer. So there's another guy that looks like Van Damme. And Michael Rooker is supposed to use the clone to go find the actual killer. Because they're linked somehow. Genetic double. And there's a scene where Michael Rooker's character is on the side of an ambulance. And the ambulance is going through this narrow tunnel. And it's going so fast it's bumping up and down. And you see the actual, an actual person just get hit over and over again from the fucking lights and, and shit that's... It was cool also to see Van Damme play a serial killer. At that point, you didn't see Van Damme do those kind of roles, but that made it interesting. And yet again, he's playing two roles, like a double impact and maximum risk. Which that was also directed by Ringo Lamb, so. But Replicant, for a directed video film, pretty damn decent. U.S. Seals 2. Haven't seen an Isaac Florentine directed, but I have not seen U.S. Seals 2. Ticker. I reviewed this when I did my Steven Seagal Marathon. It uses staff footage. Dennis Hopper, I think, did all of his scenes in one day. It's funny, the Nas, who's on the cover, he's in the film for like 10 minutes and then dies. And then he's the partner of... Tom Sizemore wants re revenge for his partner's death so he teams up with Steven Seagal which he doesn't do a lot of action he's more of a guy who runs this bomb squad and Steven Seagal's acting actually wasn't that bad but just the rest of the movie uh... sadly there's been much worse Seagal films than Ticker but uh... it's not that good of a movie either but I do have a review of that on the channel. Dead awake. Suffers from insomnia. Spends his nice walk in the streets. One night he witnesses a murder. Generating a strange of, chain of events in his life. Never seen it. Michael Ironside's in it as well. Huh. Octopus 2. River of Fear. The Order. I agree with Jack Thompson. Actually... I forgot he 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 wrote some stuff under this. Uh, awesome car chase. I I agree. Let's see, very underrated. Yeah, I agree with that. Let's see where was there anything on here? Such a bizarre film ticker. Yeah. It didn't keep me awake. I fell asleep. Dead awake. Well. So the movie lied. This film is hilarious. Octopus 2. Looks like it. Okay. The Order. One of Van Damme's best. So fun. Action Pat is a mix of Indiana Jones and Double Impact. And even has Charlton Heston in a cameo role. Uh, I don't see the Double Impact part of it because he's not playing twins or anything I agree with the Indiana Jones bit but I, yeah, I don't really see the double impact bit but yeah pretty much Van Damme he's a thief 
he finds out that his dad's missing in Israel. Israel. He goes there. Charles and Heston's in the film for like five, six minutes. And then there's this religious sect called the Order. Even the synopsis says lots of fights and chase scenes. Yep. Brian Thompson is the villain. Sheldon Lettish directs. Maybe that's why he thought of Double Impact. Is Sheldon Lettish also directed Double Impact. So the cover doesn't do it justice. I that's one of the few. That's one of the last times you see Van Damme smiling, acting with emotion. I miss that Van Damme. I really do. Hard cast. The best part of this was the character of Jose and his oranges. I know I've seen Hard Cash. I don't remember anything about it. Undisputed. Should have been good, but the end fight proved to be meaningless. Yeah. I mean, I could never get into Undisputed. I prefer the sequels. This is one of those where I think the sequels are much better than the first one. Because really, in this film, neither of these characters are that likable. At least to me. Derailed. The film's quite funny. The editing is out of control. Special effects are ridiculous. I would rather watch this than Powder Flesh. I don't know. I mean, I've maintained I think this is one of Van Damme's worst films. I mean, I ranted on when I did my Van Damme marathon. Like, Derailed is fucking awful. And this, it should have been fun. I mean, it's like Van Damme's version of Under Siege 2. But horrible special effects. And just. It was a joke. It was a. It just made me go. What? Come on Van Dam, What are you doing man? Just piss poorly directed. Shark Attack 3. I did review that film. That's the movie that's. Has the moral line. Let me. Let me take you home and eat your pussy. If you know what, if you want to know the connotation of that, watch my review of Shark Attack 3. It's a fucking ridiculous movie. I have to go a little bit quicker because I'm already 40 some minutes in. Submarines don't know about Death Train. Uh, don't know about that. In Hell, Great Prison. Dark and dirty prison thriller with a satisfied ending. It's a yeah, it's a solid movie. That's another film I reviewed when I did my Van Damme marathon. Windleham directs once again. It's a good dramatic role for Van Damme. If you don't want to expect a lot of action scenes and they just don't be lying heart, but in a prison or another iteration of Death Warrant, it's not. It's much more of a dramatic movie. There are fights in it, but it's not. The class of Van Damme. This is more of a brutal brawling. But he has some really nice emotional moments with Van Damme. Because the woman of his life gets killed. He kills the guy. He gets sent to prison. He goes through the hardships of being in prison. There are times where he wants to give up. But he keeps going. I didn't. People who say Van Damme can't act. Go watch a film like In Hell. Detention. Dolph Lundgren's a badass teacher. Sally's not much of a badass movie. I mean, it's not Dolph Lundgren's worst film. It's trying to be like Die Hard in the school. But one of the issues is that there's not many bad guys. And then the students, I didn't give a whole shit about the students. I mean, I had a couple of alright action scenes. I mean, you could do a lot worse. But just, uh, to me, it's one of the lesser Dolph Lundgren movies. Not one of his worst, but just one of the me, me. But again, feel free to watch my review of that. Another film I reviewed when I did my Steam Sadol marathon, Alpha Kill. One of Sadol's most bizarre films that makes absolutely no sense. Funny fight scenes. Japanese Yakuza are in the same spot, the whole movie repeating the same dialogue. I forgot about that, that's right. It's funny, there's a, on the cover, there's like helicopters and explosions. That doesn't happen in the movie. And yeah, that was a, 
that was one of the beginning starts of Sadal's directed video career, and just it would get worse from there, <laughs> way worse. Billy the Beast. Hilarious scene where Sadal steals a bottle of water and slides forever. Yeah, that was absolutely fucking ridiculous. I think the car, I swear the car on that DVD is from the beginning of Half Past Dead. When him and Ja Rule are, I could be wrong, but I would not be surprised if that was the fucking car from that scene. The star of every fucking movie, XCIA, XCIA, X this, XCIA's quest to find his kidnapped daughter leaves him on a trail of political entry, corruption, danger, and betrayal. His poor fight scenes. He barely does his own fucking fight scenes. His weight is gaining more fucking fatter. Piss poorly edited. And laughable. But the scene Jack Thompson described is laughable. Highway Men, I believe I reviewed that film. I saw it in the theater back in the day from the director of the original The Hitcher. Not a bad film at all. Jim Caviezel does a good job as the lead who's trying to get revenge for the death of his wife. Chasing this guy who hunts people down in his 72 El Dorado. Has some pretty good car chases and car stunts. The yeah, Highwaymen. Again, decent film. Direct, direct action. It is pure action. I, that's a fun movie. I will say that the score the music is not the best. The opening title sequence kind of gives away the entire movie this is opening titles and they show images of stuff that's going to happen later so if you want to watch the film just skip the opening credits but yeah it's just a movie that you just you want to see Dolph Lauren kick a lot of ass that's what direct action is and uh I was happy with that Alien Lockdown uh, haven't seen Unstoppable. I might have seen, but I thought it was just, eh, remember being rather lame. The Marksman. Didn't care for that. Was he still sleepwalking through the movie? He hardly has any dialogue. Yeah, exactly. Submerged. It's only 10 minutes in the submarine. Randomly has a soap op, has an opera scene. Derry Dance is wasted. Agreed on all that. I mean, I. I ranted about Submerged when I did my Sadol Marathon. That was a film that was supposed to be a horror movie, like John Carver's The Thing. But then Sadol or someone else said, fuck it, changed the entire fucking plot of the movie. So it was no longer a fucking horror film about monsters. It was about some fucking hypnotizing people, terrorists, whatever the fuck it was supposed to be about. And yeah, for a movie that looks like it's about a submarine, yeah, they're only in for 10 minutes. And Gary Daniels pretty much just gets his ass kicked by Steve Siddall and can't do any of his moves, can't do any of his martial arts. Siddall kills him. I think before that, Siddall, the one, one of the few things I like about the film is Siddall going, God sucker, motherfucker. <laughs> That's it. And the Hitchcock's, I know he talked about how he fucking despised working with Siddall on it. He fucking hated it. Retrograde. Boring sci-fi, yet again, Dear Zealous is wasted. Yeah, to me, that's Dolph Lundgren's worst film. You want to know why? Feel free to watch my rant. I ranted on that piece of shit when I did my my uh, marathon of Dolph's movies. That's a horrible fucking film. The Day You Die. Yeah, steals footage from Top of the World with Peter Weller. The Order of Van Damme. Sadal and Treach have zero chemistry. Randy Cameos for Randy Dutour. Has a very young Chloe Grace Moritz. Oh, yeah, I didn't... I didn't remember that. Today you die, today you sleep. When you watch that film, that day you will sleep. The Cutter. Still have yet to see that Chuck Norris film. Last leading role. Still have yet to see it. Maybe one day I'll do a Chuck Norris marathon. I don't know. Russia Specialist. Great action film. Dolph and Ben have great chemistry. I agree. Dolph Lundgren directed it, did a really nice job, it's a really nice movie, it's a solid, a solid movie that showcases that Dolph Lundgren can direct, he's a fairly good director, 
when given the chance. And nicely directed story of revenge. 16 blocks. <coughs> That's with Bruce Willis. I don't mind that film. I think the biggest problem is most deaf. And his stupid accent. I don't know what the hell he's going for with his accent. He should just talk like he does in other movies. That was the biggest mistake. Other than that, I do enjoy the film. Bruce Willis was good in it. Attack Force. Total Disaster. Yeah. That's Seagal's worst film, in my opinion. Attack Force is... Once again, like, submerged. It was supposed to be one film. They changed it to a completely other fucking film. supposed to be, be about aliens and then instead it became fucking people that are mutated there's this fucking thing that's going to poison the water and but they stop it by blowing up a computer with a grenade apparently that stops it I remember I told my friend Michael CP that he laughed his fucking ass off that's why I hope one day he fucking reviews attack force Endgame. I don't remember much about this film, but this seemed like a movie that would have was going to go into theaters, and it never did. Because it's got Cooper Green Jr., James Woods, Burt Reynolds, but I just see why it didn't go into theaters. Because it's kind of a meh movie, average, average action, average story. Pretty decent cast, but put the deal for an average film. Such a command. Yeah, kind of a middle of the road Van Damme film. I don't hate it. Middle of the road, though. Feel free to watch my review of Such a Command. Yeah, again, Van Damme is good. I do think a bit more could have been done with its setup. I think they could have taken a few more hints from a Soul in Prison 13 and other movies of that Siege. Subgenre. Undisputed 2, awesome sequel. These way better than the first. Michael J. White, Scott Atkins do fantastic fight sequences. Mercenary for Justice. Fun. I know I reviewed this film. I don't even remember what the hell the movie was about. So confusing. It's like three different scripts rolled in one. Again, I did review this film. I don't even remember what the fuck. He must break into one of the most well guarded prisons in Eastern Europe and free the son of the most notorious drug lord in the world today. I don't even remember the fucking movie. Shows how fucking. <sighs> Theater of Seems at all. I'll be right back. Alright. Hopefully, I edited this part out too. But uh, it was that Lonely Hearts, which I haven't seen, but apparently stars John Travolta and Selma Hayek. The Wicker Man, Nick Cage, kind of says it all. <laughs> the contract, the only contract what mattered has the paycheck, such a lame movie. I disagree. I don't think this film's that bad. I disagree, Jad Thompson. I actually don't mind the contract. It's not a wall-to-wall -wall action film, but I thought it was good enough because of John Cusack and Morgan Freeman's performances. A father and son, the father played by John Tuzat, attempt to bring an assassin, played by Morgan Freeman, to authorities, but his dangerous associates have other plans. So it's John Tuzat and the kid who plays his son going through the forest, the woods. They got Morgan Freeman at gunpoint, and the three of them are being chased by people. They either want to kill Morgan Freeman or want to get him free. And then, if you expect a big action film, it's not that, but I, mean, I thought the two actors did a good job with their roles, so I enjoyed it for that. 80 minutes, 5.9, that's too high. Wasted potential, I agree. Absolute wasted potential. You needed a better director. I mean, Al Pacino in a fast-paced, riveting thriller based on time, as in the clock is set. You have this long to find a serial killer who's going to try to pen the crimes on you. 
but it was in the slightest because the director sucks, John Avnet. Urban Justice, honestly, Sigal's best directed video film. Because, I mean, it even then has issues with some of the way the camera shapes and so forth. But I think because it was just so straightforward, it wasn't fucking XCIA going off to fucking somewhere in the UK or somewhere out other foreign country doing this and this. It was just someone died. Sadol so goes to the hood, fucks people up. Who killed this guy? Who's, you know, who did Bobby Lupo? <laughs> and yes, Eddie Griffin is in the film. But I had fun with Urban Justice compared to Sadol's other films. Rambo 4, love Rambo 4. To me, is the last Rambo film we need. Fantastic experience in the theater. The Shepherd Border Patrol. Okay, it was Isaac Florentine. Yeah. I reviewed this when I did my Van Day Marathon. I like The Shepherd. Straightforward. Titting ass. Nice to see him directed by Isaac Florentine. Would be nice to see the two of them team up again. Isaac Florentine knows how to handle action sequences. And uh, he did a good job with this. Scott Atkins in the film as well. Hero Wanted, I haven't seen. Trouble doing Junior, Ray Liotta. Man tracks down, murders the man that left him, and a bank teller for dead during a robbery. Only end up having the slain thief's associates come after him in retaliation. I never heard of this. Guess what? Ray Liotta is the bad guy. Yeah, I've, of course. Righteous Kill, absolutely horrible movie. I agree. I reviewed Righteous Kill on the channel. It does not deserve a 6. I mean, some of the good films get like 3.9s and 4.9s and 4.8s, but this gets a 6. Get the fuck out of here. Waste of potential on these two actors. Waste of potential. Shark in Venice, title says it all. Kill Switch has a hilarious window sequence which is repeated throughout the scene. Yes, yeah, so kicks a guy out the window, and the way they edit it, they edit so the guy goes out the same window like seven times. I have no idea why the hell they did that. Also, Sadol thinks he's black in this movie. Does that certainly what how he tries to talk? Black or Cajun, whatever the fuck. The only pause I remember is, oh, Sadol, or his double, beats the shot of a killer with a hammer, breaking his bones. Like the idea, which he was in a better movie. Thick as thieves. Haven't seen. Direct contact. New image stock footage of the movie. Yeah, that film has a lot of stuff. Even the cover is stock footage. That cover is from Dolph Lundgren's The Russian Specialist. So even the fucking cover is stock footage from another movie. So yeah, just once I found that out, I'm like, eh, this is... Other than Dolph kicked him out the window and he put a grenade in him, in his clothes, so Microprey explodes. Unless well, that's from a fucking stock footage from another movie too. Streets of Blood, Val Kilmer, 50 Cent, Sharon Stone, Michael Bean. Interesting cast, but I've never seen the film. Well, interesting other than fucking 50 Cent. Lies and Illusions, never saw. Christian Slater, Cooper Jr. Jr. Hmm. 3.5, wow. Command Performance. Dolph is the ultimate rock star. I agree with that. Love Command Performance. I reviewed that on the channel. When I did my Dolph marathon. Pretty much Dolph in a Die Hard type of movie. Where it's Die Hard in a rock concert. He's the drummer of a band. And terrorists take over. Dolph Lundgren. Dying is easy. Rock and roll is hard. 
Love command performance. Bad Lieutenant Porter Carl, New Orleans. I might have seen this, but it's been a long time. Und Undisputed 3, a worthy sequel. I enjoy it. Excellent fight sequences. Spendables, great movie theater experience. Yes, looking at it nowadays, some of the ways the fights are shot could be handled a lot better and less shaky, and some of the CGI is horrible. But to me, that of the Expendables films that had the right tone, that had the right tone. There was levity and humor, but they were taking it fairly serious. And again, the Expendables, the first one, the second one, they tried to be too wink wink. We're in on the joke. I'm like, this is just not as appealing as is the guess other people. And the third one, they want to be fucking fast and furious. But this one, like. Of the tone, I thought this fit the best. Stone with Edward Norton and Robert De Niro. Never seen. The Mechanic. <laughs> it's boring as stones. <laughs> the Mechanic. I might have reviewed that. I wasn't a fan. I, I thought the sequel, Mechanic Resurrection, was actually a lot better than this. The Son of No One. Channing Tatum. Al Pacino. Young cop is signed to precinct in the working class neighborhood where he grew up and an old secret threatens to destroy his life and family. Never seen it. Drive angry. Well, Jad Taza says, Son of No One, a very dull film but has a satisfying ending. Oh, okay. Drive angry. Fun movie. Fun, over the top, escapism entertainment. A dad who comes back from the dead to Steve's hell to chase after the man who killed his daughter and kidnapped his granddaughter. An entertaining movie from the directors of the My Bloody Valentine remake, Patrick Lussier. Conan the Barbarian, stop remaking Arnold's classics. I agree. Jason Mamma Mia can't ask for shit. I don't think he has any presence. He has gore. So I'll just say positive about Conan the Barbarian. I also have some really crappy CGI. Spendables 2. I felt I felt kind of sorry for Van Damme and Scott Atkins as they were the underdogs. Yeah, I said that in my review because I'm like, fuck. Okay, they're the bad guys, but look who they're going up against. Arnold Sly, Bruce Willis, Chuck Norris, Jason Statham, Dolph Lundgren, <laughs> and more versus... Van Damme and his pupil Scott Atkins. I'm like, how about some more on the villain side? To make it a little bit more even of a fight, you know? <laughs> but that, I was really disappointed in Expendables 2. Like, it was rated R, but it felt like a diluted rated R in a way, because there really wasn't much cursing, and the violence was even more CGI, that's how it felt. Van Damme was good as the bad guy, he was the best part of the movie. Him and seeing Chuck Norris on the screen again. Those are the two best parts of the film. But then why does everybody have to be a fucking good guy? The Iceman. I, I've seen that film, I could not get into it. Just wasn't for me. Trespass. Rest in peace, Joel Schumacher. Haven't seen the film. I know it's a... What do you call it? A home invasion film. Stolen in the cage. Haven't seen it. Was Nicholas Paycheck stolen? Sally... So... He fucking got broke. I guess he's still broke. That's why he's making so much fucking... So many fucking movies. This is in so much depth. <laughs> Tested Chainsaw 3D. Oh my god. Three dicks in your face. Tested Chainsaw. Do your thing, cuz. <sighs> I could rant on that movie for 20 fucking minutes straight. That's probably. I would say the worst Chainsaw Master film. I mean, he's in a fucking amusement park. 
And you think, oh, he's going to give a fuck to the amusement amusement park massacre. No. He just walks around and there's a guy wearing a goddamn wannabe like pig mask or something. He just steers the kid. And Chainsaw Master 2, he would take the chainsaw and cut the guy's fucking head. And it would fall off. No. Lame fucking movie. Lepus is Fallen. Decent movie. Ninja. It was okay. Ninja Shadow of a Tear. That was much better. I actually think that was a... Uh, I would say that's my favorite Scott Atkins film. Just love the fight sequences in that. Killing Season. I remember that being kind of meh. But I haven't seen it in a long while. That's with Robert De Niro and John Travolta. Where John Travolta decides to start hunting Robert De Niro's character. Homefront. The thing I remember the most is Jason Statham had a cat and someone stole his cat. That's not the main plot of the film. Although if Jason Statham did that, he would have beat out John Wick. My John Wick, they killed my dog. 2014, here, 2013. They stole my cat. They stole my pussy. No, that's not what the film's about. I don't know why it has the fucking American flag on there. It's not that patriotic of a movie. It's written by Stallone. I'm like, Stallone, this is what you wrote? Interesting to see James Frank was the bad guy, but... Eh, well, to me, kind of a forgettable Statham film. Legend of Hercules I didn't see. Spendables 3. Embarrassing. All these people like Ronda Rousey. Her co-star, the fucking mole. All this other stuff. PG-13. New people I don't give a fuck about. The people I do give a fuck about barely have shit to do. Antonio, ben- Antonio Banderas Theater won't shut up. The humbling stage actor who is solely loses his mind and engages in a relationship with a sexually confused younger woman. Never heard of this Al Pacino film. Huh. Automata. Antonio Banderas. Haven't seen it. Survivor, Piers Brosnan, Miljovic. So, is Piers Brosnan, I'm guessing, the villain in the film, or Miljovic teams up with Piers Brosnan? Piers Brosnan has one of the worst aims in this movie. Uh, oh my god, uh, it's a Miljovic film not directed by her husband? Holy shit. London has fallen. Didn't mind the film. I thought it was a pretty fun sequel. Criminal. Disappointed. There was potential with Kevin Costner. His role. The kind of role he was he was playing. But. Uh, stuff in that movie just didn't make sense. Like. He's driving to get to Gal Gadot and her kid to save them. A noble gesture. He's supposed to be this criminal, but because of these memories and such, he's changing his personality to be a better person. But then, while going to save Gal Gadot, all of these cop cars are being wasted, and there's like, no way these cops are alive. I'm like, you're murdering a bunch of fucking cops, which is not noble, to get to your noble cause. <laughs> well those cops didn't die. Well then. That's ridiculous. With how. I mean. Th- there's other reasons why I don't like the film. I don't know. I thought Criminal was just disappointing. Mechanic Resurrection. Much better than the first one. I agree. I like the story more. I like the action scene more. And uh, it was cool to see Tommy Jones. And Michelle Yeoh in there. Undisputed 4, liked it. I reviewed those movies. Security, very fun film with Ben Kingsley as the villain. It was okay. I just wish they utilized the mall a lot more. 
Then I was cool to see Antonio Banderas in this kind of film, but I didn't care for the other supporting actors in the mall with Antonio. I would rather prefer Antonio by himself or another capable actor across from Antonio and the two of them. But the other people in the mall actor didn't give a rat's ass and I wish it had more action or utilized the mall more. That's just me though. But it's not a bad film. Hitman's Bodyguard. Very fun. It surprised me. I agree. It is directed by Spendables 3 director. But this was rather entertaining. Leatherface. Sh lame. Shitty. Useless. Pointless prequel. That we didn't need. Loving Pablo. Never heard of. Acts of Vengeance. Antonio Banderas vs. Corbin. Isaac Florentine Durettes. I haven't seen Acts of Vengeance. They did Bloodline. Oh shit. I forgot about this movie. I ranted on this piece of shit. It fucking sucked. Horrible. Horrible movie. With one of the dumbest fucking lead characters in a while. Bullet Head. Horrible title for an old okay K movie. Because Adrian Brody, John Malkovich, and Rory Culkin... Three criminals. They're trapped in a warehouse. Uh, and Tom Baderas releases his dog. That's been specifically trained to kill. And so these three are trying to steep this dog. Um, so it was like a decent well staged thriller. But in a horrible title. Bullet Head. I don't even know why the fuck it's called Bullet Head. That's probably why it's much lesser known. Hunter Killer, haven't seen. Submarine movie. 211, Nick Cage. This film felt unfinished but had a cool rocket launcher scene at the beginning. Yeah, haven't seen the film. Hellboy. Uh, that was a movie that did not need to be made. You should have just done Hellboy 3 with Ron Perlman. Instead, you get this. Movie that kind of goes through the same beats as the first film, but on the flip side, just totally inconsistent. There are times where it's trying to be a fun superhero movie, but then there are times where he goes to this world where this witch or demon is kept, at least a witch, and in this closet are like dead kids hanging. Hanging there. And Hellboy realizes she's feeding them pieces of the dead kids. But then a few scenes before or after, there's a goddamn goofy scene where he's going after this monster that possesses baby. Or re no, I realize that no, that's not the real baby. This is a fake baby. And so you have this baby body but animal head and Hellboy's chasing it as it goes through the fucking walls. I'm like what is this shit? <sighs> Andrew has fallen. Disappointing because I like the first two. But this film just didn't feel as if it had nearly as much action as the first two. Although I, I do remember liking Nick Nolte in the movie as his dad. Poison Rose, haven't seen. Rainbow Last Blood. It's better than most of Sly's recent content. Uh, I disagree, Chad Thompson. I disagree with that. I mean... Sadly, I think I'd rather... <sighs> sadly, I would rather... I don't... God, Sly's content lately has just been so fucking disappointing, man. They all run together for me, honestly. Okay, to be fair, is it better than this deep plan 2 and 3? Yes, to be fair. But uh, still a disappointing film. Kill Chain, another Nick Cage film I've never heard of. The Outpost, Scott Eastwood. Oh, The Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard. That's right, it was supposed to come out this year, but it got delayed because of what's going on in the world. I'm curious about this. Spendables 4, don't think this is happening. 
Yeah, I don't think it's happening either. So. With that said. Uh, I have to link these videos together. But thank you once again, Jack Thompson. Thank you all for watching who did watch. Take care. And we will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.